Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's 1 million by 1 million strategy roundtable for entrepreneurs. One and by one, as you know, is the first and only global virtual accelerator in the world. Our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue, build a trillion dollars in global GDP and 10 million jobs. We have a community of over half a million people around the world. This is the 490th free mentoring roundtable, and we have had over 150,000 people participate in these sessions. They've been very popular now for a long time. We started doing them back in 2008 as an experiment, and then it blossomed into the full-fledged acceleration program from 1M by 1M. This event is being recorded. Every single recording of our roundtables are available on the YouTube channels. These are the free roundtables. We also have a lot of private roundtables, and those are not published publicly in the YouTube channel, but we do have all the recordings of those available within our membership um, in the private area. Um, if you are looking for learning material, this is a very good learning material because we strategize on ideas we, um, and, you know, basically we dissect pictures and, and brainstorm around strategy in pictures. So it's, if you have time to listen, by all means, check those out. On Twitter, we are at 1M by 1M and at Shromana, our uh, hashtag for today's session is 1M1M. Uh, these are the call-in numbers. It is a round table, not a broadcast, so we want you to participate as much as you would like to. And uh, in the meantime, I'm not quite ready yet for call-in. I will put the slide back up a little bit later when we are ready for call-in. But in the meantime, the public chat is always open. You should feel free to weigh in in the public chat, ask questions, whatever you want to discuss. Um, we do want to hear from you. Now we're going to start with the entrepreneur pitches. We have two scheduled pitches. And um, just want to set some expectations for people who are pitching today or at a later session. Remember, this is a safe working session, and we are on your side. There is no other agenda here but to brainstorm with you on your strategy. If you disagree with the feedback you get here, that's perfectly fine. It's, after all, your venture. All we can do is give you the benefit of our, ex our experience and, uh, and then, you know, strategic guidance based on that. You do what you like. You take into consideration what, you, what feedback you get here, and then you decide what you like. One thing to remember, though, not all businesses can raise money. Not all businesses should raise money, and raising money doesn't guarantee success. VCs are trying to go from zero to $100 million in five to seven years, which means it's a very fast growth trajectory. And your business will need to show that it can grow at that pace and has the ingredients to grow at that pace, which is not easy. So, um, that is one of the things that people investors evaluating ventures consider when they're deciding whether or not to invest. But you can also build a business that is a slower growth business, but a sustainable, profitable business, and that's also, in our books, that's also success. Our philosophy of entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship equals customers, revenues, and profits. Financing is optional, exit is optional. Another commonly held and deeply held belief in our circles is do not go to VCs as beggars, go as kings. And to do that, you're going to have to validate your business first and get to some level of customer, ideally paid customer, and even better if you can get to some traction to show velocity, that's when VCs are chasing you as opposed to you chasing VCs with a bigger ball. 
So that's what we would like to equip you and, and you know, shepherd you into a situation where your negotiating hand is superior to the investor's negotiating hand. That's the, you know, best case scenario in our uh, vision. Okay, so we're going to start with Marcus Salomon from Germany. Marcus, please uh, tell us what you're doing. Your mask is superb. Is that a mask from <laughs> Venice from the carnival? <laughs> it's actually a children's play mask. It's supposed to be Iron Man. <laughs> kind of, kind of went with the T-shirt, and I liked it. And I asked a friend, "Hey, should I put this picture?" She said, "Yes, absolutely." <laughs> so. Uh, all right, so I'll, I'll just introduce myself right quick. I'm Marcus Selman. I'm 45 years old. I'm a software engineer. I uh, studied at the University of Applied Sciences in Esslingen, close to Stuttgart, which translates into Benstown. So lots of engineering uh, places around. Lots of people yeah. who want to get into these engineering places. I uh, preferred to stay a freelancer throughout my mm -hmm. career. I'm a LabVIEW specialist. Oh, that's a bit, can you go back right quick? Sure, sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm a LabVIEW specialist, which is a graphical programming language for in industrial automation. I'm also a community host where I teach students and uh, scientists how to program in LabVIEW. I had the honor of uh, participating in the MIT Entrepreneurship Bootcamp last year in Tokyo. I'm, I'm, I'm settled here in uh, Reutlingen, Germany, which is also close to Stuttgart, and I do own a small fire engine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So, um, I have, <laughs> seriously, I have a friend who has algorithms that are capable of precisely predicting when a machine um, is going to fail. And she's validated mm -hmm. through her own business, but she can't scale. She doesn't scale. She doesn't really want to scale, but she 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 offered co cooperation on on uh, these algorithms. Okay. And uh, so that's where I want to go through my knowledge in LabVIEW and the uh, pertaining hardware that's being offered in the ecosystem of National Instruments or now mm -hmm. NI, as of re they rebranded just uh, yesterday, I believe, to NI. And so, so what, what I agree with that friend on, uh, that's uh, Dr. Hake from Hamburg, what, what I agree with her is that her um, algorithms can be applied not only to windmills, what she decided to specialize on, but can be applied to any kind of industries and machines that have slow turning uh, processes, irregular processes that require uh, like or can be monitored through vibration sensors. So okay. next slide, please. So she she does have validation so far. She has a proven business case. She has uh, returning customers in the in the windmill operator space around Hamburg. So she's a small startup and she's not really looking to scale in, 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 in a way where she has to pick up uh, loans or money or capital where she has to give away uh, what she has to say in her own business. So um, what's important, what's the key takeaway from the last slide is that windmill manufacturers and builders versus windmill operators is a battleground. And um, condition monitoring, predictive maintenance can help level that battleground. Um, the, the manufacturers don't always work in the interest of the operators. They will build a windmill all right, but they will not tell you if it's aligned perfectly and if it'll, if it'll fail in three months, six months, or 12 months, whatever. And so mm -hmm. my next step is, and we're in negotiations here right now with another uh, uh, partner of mine of redeveloping uh, the pertaining uh, electrical cabinets that come with the measurement hardware and the software, which I can develop myself. 
uh, with LabVIEW, thus cutting the cabinet price in uh, at least in half. And, and uh, what I cabinet believe, is this? Oh, imagine a windmill, and you you want to measure vibration somewhere in the in the in the gears. So you have to apply sensors, and the cabinet hosts all the hardware that's needed for uh, for measurement for storing okay. the data and communicating the data through uh, LTE, 5G, whatever. So that's, that's, that's what the cabinet does. It's the electrical part of the, the whole measurement thing. What she's interested in purely, she's, she's actually, she's a data scientist who's forced to, to, uh, to run a business, hiring people, picking up loans, and uh, handling customers. All she would love to do all day is just looking at machine data and, and saying, okay, this guy is going to fail in three months. This guy is going to fail in two weeks. And you really have to. Um, and what's especially what's special about if 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 I have another minute? Mm -hmm. Sure. Go ahead. So, so what's what's really special about the windmill uh, operation business? The the wind parks. Is so the offshore wind parks are hard to reach. So the worst case is by helicopter. Um, the usual case is by by ship, by boat. And um, so you want to predict uh, exactly if a windmill is going to fail, and you need to do maintenance. So you can you can do a batch of windmills in like in one shot. One go, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's that because it's the travel actually the tra travel time that makes it expensive. The whole servicing part. Okay. Yeah, and I believe further scaling of data services, um, which she already does offer, can be achieved through abstracting the machine learning part, the data science part, and the algorithms as web services. And. Um, uh, the the only hindrance would be like the the resulting data or reports. Um, they do still require final human reviews and and touches, but that is something that simply has to be worked out over time. And uh, I believe if um, AI algorithms can uh, distinguish cancer from from healthy tissue, they can distinguish a machine failing from one not really failing. So right. yeah, that would be from my side. Um, right. You know, what I, like, what I like a lot about how you presented this is it's extremely precise, it's extremely focused. You know, the problem is very well understood. The solution that you're coming up with is very, very clearly understood. So tell me where you are getting stuck and let me see how I can help you with that. Okay, where I'm getting stuck is um, to setting up the, the collaboration with her. She's a, she's a pro in, in that business, in the windmill part, for uh, over a decade. And okay. um, she's clear about not wanting to go back into the industry. She, she wants to run her own shop. And we, we, we all feel with her, I guess. As a woman in, in the IT industry or in any kind of industry, it's just not funny. I probably don't have to explain further. So um, what, what I believe is, uh, yeah, we're currently, actually I'm supposed to sign her NDA. And I, I do have my own contact. I, have to, uh, I do have consultants uh, that uh, are into legal and they tell me, okay, this is like a, a, a big corporation type NDA and um, there's, there's points in it that won't do you a favor and won't do her a favor too. And so that's already like, like how, how do I set up cooperation with her is, is um, like, do so I. What do you, the way to think about this is what do you need from her? If her expertise needs to be part of the day-to-day -day running of this business, then she has to, somehow participate in this venture, um, even as a, you know, what is her contribution? Is it software that is her contribution? Is it the algorithm that is her contribution? Yes, the algorithms, and, de definitely. 
And, the, and, the, and do you need her on a day-to-day -day basis to use her algorithm and to sell her algorithm and to implement her alg algorithms? Actually, actually, no. So that's my last point on this slide. I, I want to abstract her algorithms and whatever she has in machine learning and data science into a web service that is easily accessed. So where, where like my end customers later will just stop by and drop off their data raw data, whatever okay. data. So what, and you need, what you need is for her to, to give you access to the intellectual property. Uh -huh. And the way to set it up is you set up a company and you value the company with, uh, with an intellectual, uh, with a piece for the intellectual property. You, you know, based on the intellectual property, you value the company, and, and she gets, gets a percentage of that company because of her intellectual property contribution. And then she becomes an advisor okay. while you basically run the company and build the business. And she will have equity in the company. If, if you ever sell the company, you can, uh, she will make money off the company. That's one way to set it up. Awesome. This sounds really like, like something I could uh, get onto. Yes. It's very easy. Agreed. It's not difficult at all. And, and uh, you know, if you uh -huh. need help at a granular level to figure out how to do that and how to build this, this business, you can, mm -hmm. you know, you're very welcome to use one million by one million. We, this, is, this stuff is very easy to help you. So, with. yes, I, I am already a, a basic program subscriber. So, I'll, okay. I'll look into the, the upper level program as soon as I'm flush again because uh, Currently, I've been I've been hustling quite a bit to to get to this point, to get to this presentation today. And to be honest, sure. um, I'm, I'm right now this very minute I'm out of runway. <laughs> I have to go back to work. <laughs> you have to go back to work. That's okay. I mean, that's a very common situation where you have to do some work, make some money, and and that's fine. But in parallel, you can, uh -huh. you know. So, so, so I yeah, so, so absolutely and, solve, uh, obviously solve your runway problem first and foremost, no question. Okay. Okay, All great. Right. great. Great advice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Don't stop studying the basic. If you already are in the basic program, don't stop studying the basic. All right. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. We're going to switch to Prasanya Jha. Prasanna, please unmute your line and uh, let us hear what you're doing. Are you on, Prasanna? Hello? What's going on? Yes. Yeah, perfect, okay. yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, All thank right. you. My name is Prasanna Jha. I'm calling from uh, India, Pune. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Samarna, giving me opportunity to, uh, to 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 talk in front of you. And thank you very much for your kind okay. words. Uh, yeah, very valuable insights, uh, especially about that uh, king thing and bigger thing. Uh, I, I like liked it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So uh, this is the uh, this is the presentation. Uh, it's about uh, remote learning. So it's uh, uh, we are having one software solution for uh, online education system for schools uh, for remote learning. So uh, so that uh, we can go to next slide. So I will explain about this. Yeah. So we have seen that we are witnessing a paradigm shift in pedagogy nowadays. So yeah. So uh, yeah, so in in current scenario, school is having everything like they are having very mature offline system, like their own building uh, book vendors. They are having in uh, in house book library. They are having convenient transportation and offline feedback system. They are having fees collection system. They are having everything they are possessing nowadays uh, offline, and it's very mature till date uh, when Corona was not here. But now situation has been changed. So yeah, please go to. So now we can see that we are having a shift in uh, the way teacher teaches now and, and learners learn. So uh, we can see uh, very, very apparently that it, uh, what is the difference between traditional learning and modern learning nowadays. So, and this is a very global trend. So uh, remote learning, uh, remote schooling and uh, house uh, home, home schooling is a global trend. Because, 
So yeah. this uh, this shift need school a, 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 a very a cost effective online remote learning system which adapt the school seamlessly. So so uh, please go to next slide then. So in this new paradigm, school and institute need a technology enabled solution to take care of their student academics and school administration. So, so and what advantage we will get uh, uh, by this thing like uh, digital education uh, apart from apart from uh, the, the uh, Corona uh, this un unprecedented thing, what all what additional benefit uh, we can get this. So these are like a digital education at home comfort then economically viable option for a school to offer then avoid a long commute, reduce the transportation cost and accommodate higher than expected enrollment without additional classroom. And uh, the last is uh, uh, when a student wants to create their own path, they can own a learning path so they can uh, fix their path and they can um, run their own um, by their own pace. So these are few advantages in which a school and a student will get through this uh, medium and this uh, software platform. Yeah. So Prasanna, I have a couple of comments that I want you to think about. Um, you seem to be making an assumption that that school is going to become remote going forward. We are for the next 18 months in a very tricky situation, but in the long run, do you think this assumption that school is going to become remote a reasonable assumption? Yeah, I mean, sir, uh, I am assuming, I am envisioning that it's going to be hybrid model because we would be accustomed to online, uh, uh, this uh, uh, online things, online education also. A school, a student, parents, teachers, everybody would be accustomed to that new, new, a new thing. So this new normal will be part of uh, uh, a part of the life, and uh, so in hybrid model it can go. That is my uh, that is my uh, assumption. So okay, let's keep going. While we keep going with your presentation, I will I will comment as we go along. Okay, so it's having. A, okay, just go to next slide. I will show you. And I missed something. Uh, it's not there. Okay. Uh, so I missed one one thing. So I have, I have clearly described that uh, for 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 uh, getting online, the school are getting online by using many tools. They are having a lot of tools. They are using like uh, for virtual classroom. They are using Zoom or Team. They are using uh, or for um, uh, this homework or assignment. They are using Google Form system and WhatsApp for PTM and everything. So. Phone callers. There's a lot of thing, a lot of coordination. They they uh, they need to uh, orchestrate. Uh, they need to manage. But uh, what we are trying to do here is we are collaborating everything, every every requirement of a school. What what a school need. We and, and we have developed one software which is a technology enabled asset. It will be technology enabled asset for a school, and it will be kind of personalized and exclusive software. And it will be mobile tablet supported also. Apart from uh, the desktop, it will be supported mobile uh, and uh, tablet also. It would be secure because it would be cl cloud based, and it would be cloud uh, cost effective also because uh, cloud is having uh, inherent feature uh, to become a, a cloud effect uh, cost effective. So, so Prasanna, it, what does your software do? Is it a competitor to Zoom or Team, or is it something else? Yeah, so uh, uh, it will give me. Uh, I will give you all bullet points what it can do. So it, it's there in uh, uh, next slide. So the things will be uh, much clearer to us. So uh, apart from this, it's having a simple modern and uh, easy to use interface. It's a fully customized. Then it's a support desktop, laptop, and mobile supported, and it's having private cloud also. So if we are going to the last slide, this is that was the last last slide. Uh, please uh, go to the last slide. So here we are having all these features. Uh, it's having course management system. So, uh, so whatever course uh, study material, uh, teacher can share uh, study materials, unlimited study materials to a student. They can uh, take practice test quiz assessment also. They can give assignment through PDF or doc document. And apart from this, it's having a real time notice uh, notification system also to parents or to students having live engagement like a forum, then chat, chat system is there. Virtual classroom, for virtual classroom, we have integrated this to Zoom. 
so zoom will be uh, with uh, this uh, this this uh, this software and uh, school notification uh, notice uh, they can publish and payment gateway so these are major features uh, with uh, uh, this software so it's uh, almost it's uh, uh, covering uh, almost all the, uh, means uh, uh, what all is school need so it's covering uh, most of the thing yeah so um you are not providing any content you are providing the the framework within which teachers are supposed to create the content yeah, exactly exactly so we will just provide a uh, uh, means empty um, house and the, the, then they will put their uh, furniture so content will be provided by a teacher only so what is the situation you pro you build this software have you have you work with any school uh, is there any beta customer what's the situation currently yeah so my product is ready with us it's a uh, it's uh, on on um, available for everyone it's, uh, um, uh, it's in public domain and uh, we are in talk with uh, many schools uh, um, in india also or in south africa also so we are talking to many people uh, so maybe miss uh, actually uh, 10 days before it got uh, launched so we are still in connection with people so we are working on marketing uh, online offline marketing we are doing this oh. and what uh, brings you here what what kind of help are you looking for so means uh, yeah i am i just want to know about this price model because this is kind of it's coming with many combinations uh, some sometime uh, means i am asking for uh, means a percentage of uh, percentage of tuition fee what uh, school is charging uh, from a student, so I need a minuscule percentage of that, like three to five percent. I, I so, don't think that's how you should price this at all. This should be a fast pricing. It should have a monthly subscription fee pricing model. This, is, this should not be a percentage of school revenues pricing model. Okay, okay. So, um, uh, so means, uh, and this is fast model, and I want a recurring yeah. uh, monthly uh, monthly income out of yes. this. So I discuss it all. Monthly recurring revenue should be the pricing model. Should not be a percent a revenue based, you know, a revenue share kind of pricing model. Okay, okay. So and apart from this, uh, so uh, it should depend upon number of students because yeah, number of students matters. Yeah, you could tier it. I mean, you could have different tiers of subscription. If it's a smaller classroom, it's a certain price point. If it's a mid-sized classroom, a certain price point. Another. So, I mean, if a school is buying it for the entire school, you know, you have to kind of create tiered models, right? How many students are going to be on this and stuff like that. So you have to create a pricing model based on a tiered basis, but you also have to keep in mind what kind of schools are you going after, what kind of budgets do they work with, and, and so forth. Are you going after the more, you know, the richer, more affluent schools? Are you going after the, you know, more, Government schools. What what are you talking about, and 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 how do you price it accordingly? And so there's a segmentation that needs to happen, and then your entire go-to-market strategy is going to need to be derived out of that segmentation. Okay, so it should not be means published means it should not be uh, uh, means uh, it depends on so they will have to contact salesperson to uh, get uh, to, to to know the price, right? Uh, it should not be apparent yeah. on or something like that means yeah you can give a free trial but then you know if, if you can give them a 30 day free trial but then after that it has to be paid okay and uh, so, yeah yeah and one more thing this uh, uh, with price model uh, so what happens that uh, installation for setup and installation we will charge them something and the same same amount almost same amount is coming for maintenance or and services also so uh, uh, is it okay? But in the fast business model, maintenance and services is, unless there is additional services involved, uh, maintenance is, in a fast business model, maintenance is built into the monthly subscription fee. Okay. You can't charge extra for maintenance. Okay. Okay, got it. But monthly, there there would be a monthly recurring monthly charge, but uh, I can't uh, yeah. charge uh, AMC or means maintenance. That I'll have to uh, right. uh, bring them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can charge setup. You can charge, especially if 
you know, if there is work involved in setting it up and that's something that you would be doing, you can charge setup, you can charge monthly recurring fee. If, you, if there's additional services involved, you have to identify what those services are and then you can charge additional for that. All that is viable, but you have to frame this in the context of a monthly recurring revenue fee. Okay, got it. So yeah, this is, and apart from this, I just want to know about feasibility. Is it feasible and means you know means in and out of uh, this business, uh, global business? So. Well, it really depends on what is, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that you have to do to, uh, you know, for, to check feasibility. If you uh, go to the 1M by 1M website and go to self-assessment, there's a set of questions that you need to answer. Um, that's, that's something that is going to help you, you know, gauge feasibility of this, um, this venture. So those, that's the self-assessment. Those are the questions that anybody trying to validate a business needs to answer. It's available for free. You can use that to validate and to, you know, check feasibility. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in principle, the, the main thing that is, that tells you whether it's feasible or not is whether customers are willing to pay for this product or not. And that's to do that feasibility testing, you're going to have to talk to customers, potential customers. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'm going to spend some time explaining to you how to use the 1 million by 1 million program. And after that, if you have more questions, you're very welcome to ask, uh, you know, ask those questions. Um, before we go there, though, I want you to participate in a poll for us. Uh, you know, besides these sessions, we also do every Tuesday morning these LinkedIn learning se LinkedIn sessions. These are live sessions. Actually, they're live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And um, I'd like to know what would you like me to cover in these sessions? And we are running a poll, and the four options are probability of fundraising, bootstrapping techniques, startup ideas, and incubators and accelerators. So a lot of people are participating in this poll right now. If you could take one moment, and the link is in your public chat, if you could just go to the link and vote for this, we would really appreciate it. That's, you know, our online rendezvous uh, on Tuesday mornings, 8 a.m. Pacific time. So while we're doing that, let me also ask you for your help in spreading the word about 1M by 1M. Um, if you have other serious entrepreneurs in your friends and family network and colleagues, please uh, refer 1 million by 1 million to them if you like what we are doing here. You know, we are quite candid and precise on next steps and how to put one foot before the other, strategy, positioning, segmentation, etc. And if people you know are looking for help with you know, very structured guidance, please send them here. Now, as far as resources are concerned, everything is at 1mby1m.com. You will find a free blog that I think following that, people learn a lot. The Astro Journey's book series, there are 12 books. These are case study-based books, 12 to 16 case studies each. You can start there as well. We have these free roundtables every week. You know, 490 roundtables, that's quite a lot, 150,000 attendees. We also have our full acceleration program that is 1M by 1M premium. We, get, we give you extensive methodology guidance, step-by-step, -step, weekly uh, strategy consulting mm -hmm. through these kinds of roundtables that are private, premium members only. Um, you could call it coaching, mentoring, strategy consulting, whatever. It's the same as far as we are concerned. We work on your strategy in project-level guidance. We have a terrific curriculum. You have access to that through the premium program also. That's a digital curriculum. We help you with business development, and we also help you with financing and media relations. Um, the 1M by 1M self-assessment, I just talked to you about this, is one that you can use to you know, as a strategic planning device and validation device. Strongly recommend you take a look at that. It's available for free on our website. If you get stuck with the self-assessment, a very reasonable place for you to go to is 1M by 1M Basic, 
which is our curriculum only option, and you can start studying the curriculum and fill your knowledge gaps. So go dig around on the website. We have described the program very, very elaborately. There are FAQs, video FAQs, description of the curriculum, et cetera. It is a case study-based curriculum. You get to stand on the shoulders of giants. There are over a thousand successful entrepreneurs who have participated in the case study programs, and we are keeping on adding case studies every month. Uh, we have 400 plus venture funded companies, 400 plus bootstrap companies, and 100 plus unicorn entrepreneurs whose case studies are all folded into the curriculum. So you will learn a lot by following other people's journeys. Our methodology is lean, capital-efficient, bootstrap startups. Our philosophy is bootstrap first, raise money later, and hence the concept of do not go to VCs as beggars, go as kings. If you bootstrap first, get to validation, maybe get to traction, and then raise money, you're in a much better place. That's it. We have upcoming roundtables, one more in June, and then five more in July. So by all means, Come and work with me in one of the upcoming sessions. And now we are back to Q&A. So rendezvous, online rendezvous, the ones on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter Live are um, on Tuesday mornings. Maureen, you have repeated Tuesday, June 30th, I think. Um, if you have questions, you can dial in to the dial-in line right now, 650-479-3208, access code 127-167-6145. And you can also use the public chat to ask questions. Anybody, questions? Bridget, go ahead and vote in the, in the poll. We will definitely take into account your feedback in deciding on programming for the online rendezvous. So in the online rendezvous, what we do is we collect questions from our different touch points. You know, people ask questions here, people ask questions on Quora, people ask, ask questions at the rendezvous themselves, and then I, I ask, answer a series of questions during those sessions. All right. Let me introduce you to Irina Patterson. She's on our team, and she will answer your questions about the 1M by 1M program. So feel free to email her, uh, Irina at 1MBy1M.com. Uh, Mufadal Tanorwala, your question, is it possible to get trial access to the 1M by 1M system? You can pay $99 for a month and get access to the curriculum and try that try it that way. It's very inexpensive. And uh, that's the only kind of trial you can get. There's no free trial. The free trials are these free roundtables. You can come and pitch for free for one session. And that is the premium program. You can pitch as much as you want to and get as many interactive as you want. So this is the free trial. What you're seeing here is a free trial. It's part of the free trial. Anybody else? Any other questions, comments? Hi, Sremena. I just joined yes. uh, now because of some internet problem. I was trying, uh, I was struggling with that. And okay. yeah, yeah, I'm very happy to uh, discuss my idea. I, I am currently in my last stages of my master's in cancer. And okay. I'm very keen in, um, starting a business in cancer therapeutics and diagnostics. Okay. And, uh, uh, but I need uh, to follow the steps properly. And uh, um, yeah, and for that, um, I found you on LinkedIn <laughs> and follow okay. your advice and um, yeah, and your webinars, yeah. That's great. You know, that's what we do. We teach people how to build businesses. So absolutely, by all means, follow the program and, uh, you know, maybe start with the curriculum. Go to 1M by 1M Basic and, and join and sign up for the curriculum and start following the curriculum. If you can 
spend I, one month. I just want you to follow that curriculum for one month and spend 50 hours studying the core curriculum. And I can promise you it will give you a clear blueprint of how to put one foot before the other. And then if you want to upgrade to the premium program, you're welcome to do that. You can come talk to me at these sessions uh, as well. So, you know, we have created many, many, many different ways in which you can use the 1M by 1M program and learn how to build a business. That's what we do. 100% that's what we do. So we are completely equipped to help you learn how to build a business. So much. Uh, Anybody else? Yes, go ahead. Things that I like, and I will be uh, in contact, and I'll follow these uh, uh, guidance that you that you are giving. Okay, perfect. Very very good. Anybody else? Any other questions, comments? All right. We will adjourn the session and see you here next week. As you know, we have uh, Tuesday morning online rendezvous and Thursday morning online roundtables. That's the thumb rule, no exceptions. 8 a.m. Pacific time in both cases. If you want to join the online rendezvous, uh, just you know, join live on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. All of those are fine. And um, for the online roundtables, these sessions, you're going to need to go to the website and sign up on the free public roundtables page. See you. Bye-bye. Stay safe.